In Australia, there is one type of tree that dominates the landscape more than any other. Walk for five minutes in any direction, and you'll probably see one. I am, of course, talking about the eucalyptus. Tall, sturdy, pale coloration, thick waist. But enough about my dating preferences. Why talk about trees? Oh, but plants are boring, you may say. Which is a shame. You share a lot in common with a plant, particularly in the IQ department. Eucalypts are beautiful, weird, and terrifying. And there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. Let me show you. I say eucalypts like there was just one kind, but there are in fact over 800 species. Which is more species than you can poke a stick at. Get it? Stick? Oh, you think I should branch out with my humor? Well, you're barking up the wrong tree. Anyway. They range from shrubs to tall trees, and many eucalypt species are mallees, where the plant has multiple stems originating in a giant potato-like structure called a lignotuber. Gum trees can be split into three distinct genera. There's eucalyptus, which contains the majority of the species, but also corymbia, nicknamed the bloodwood trees because their sap resembles, well, and Angophora, a small genus that contains the beautiful and twisted Sydney red gum. The vast majority are native to Australia, but there are a few species in Papua New Guinea and even the Philippines. There are diverse genus with many sizes, shapes, and colors. One of the smallest is the varnished gum, a eucalyptus shrub that only grows between 1.5 and 2 meters tall, while the truly colossal mountain ash can grow as tall as 114 meters. The tallest living individual located in Tasmania is nicknamed Centurion. It's 100.5 meters tall, or if you're from Melbourne, 53 Brendan Favolas stacked on top of each other. I mentioned the Philippines a moment ago. Its sole eucalypt species is the magnificent rainbow eucalyptus. These trees aren't part of an LSD-induced trip. You're looking at its vibrant multicolored bark, which becomes even more striking after rainfall. Other notable examples of eucalypts are the river red gum, with its gnarled appearance and ability to survive in just about any climate. The iron bark, with its rough, deeply furrowed bark, which conceals a brilliant red color underneath. And the ghost gum, a pale white outback species which glows in the moonlight, and indigenous cultures believe to embody the spirits. Eucalypts are old, 52 million years old in fact. Fossils of their flowers have been found in South America, which at the time was joined with Australia, Antarctica, and New Zealand in the supercontinent Gondwana. Eucalyptus leaves develop in an interesting way. As saplings, they face horizontally to absorb as much sunlight as possible, but as they develop, the leaves point downward. This is to prevent any more UV radiation exposure than necessary, and having evolved to live in Australia, this is very important. Another cool feature is that they can photosynthesize on both sides, unlike many other plant species, making them the double-sided tape of the plant kingdom. Eucalyptus bark can be rough or smooth depending on the species. Smooth barked trees tend to shed their bark over time, like a snake shedding its skin. In rough barks, the bark accumulates in a thick hardened layer, which shields the tree from fire. Eucalypt flowers have no petals. Instead, they have many stamens that form the bloom, creating an interesting shape. And for those of you who remember your eight biology, yes, stamens are what you think they are. What used to be the petals have fused to become an operculum, a protective lid that is only removed once the flowers bloom. Eucalypts have another unique ability. During times of drought, they can drop their limbs to conserve water. This act of self-pruning is just one of the many ways that they've adapted to survive on this dry continent. Unfortunately for us, there's no external sign of when a gum tree is about to pile drive you with a 200 kilo branch. And oh dear, I'm sorry mate. You know, with a bit of methylated spirits, that'll come right out. Eucalyptus trees contain a lot of oil. The oil serves two purposes. Its distinct odor, which contains a compound called eucalyptol, deters most insects from eating their leaves. However, certain types of insects, like sawfly larvae, have adapted to eating gum leaves. The quintessential blue haze of the Blue Mountains in New South Wales is caused by eucalyptus oil droplets that evaporate into the atmosphere. The other purpose of the oil is more infamous because the secret ingredient for reproduction in many eucalypts is fire.
Now, the presence of oil in a bushfire seems borderline suicidal, but it hastens the burning of the tree. This actually reduces the damage done to the tree compared to a slow burn that would cook it from the inside. A quick burn allows for new growth to be protected under the thick bark until the fire has passed. Gum nuts, which are actually fruit, not nuts, are protected by their thick woody exterior and release their seeds as well when the fire dies down. Bush fires have sometimes been blamed on eucalypts, but I think the trees get a bad rap. Australia is a continent of extremes and fire is a fact of life here, whether it's caused by lightning strikes or humans. Cheeky little buggers. Eucalypts have not only adapted to survive in bushfires, but to use them to their advantage. The blaze incinerates their competitors while the ash germinates their seeds. There's something admirable about the ingenuity of these plants. The eucalyptus is critical to many species of Australia's fauna. Eucalyptus leaves are the favourite and only food of the koala. They're picky eaters and can only consume leaves from 15 of the over 800 species. It's a misconception that koalas get high off the leaves. Much like the patrons at your local KFC, their diet is so nutrient lacking that they permanently exist in a state of blissful lethargy. The severe lack of protein from the leaves has caused their brains to resemble the texture of a baby's bottom. Another mammal that loves to feast on the eucalyptus tree is this little guy, the yellow belly glider. Aw, he's cute. He's also a moron. These gliders eat resin from inside the tree by cutting V-shaped holes into its bark. Eucalyptus resin, which just like the leaves, is very low in nutrients, also contains cyanide. If that wasn't enough, gnawing through the tough bark completely destroys their teeth over time. And most gliders don't live past five years because they die of starvation. Gum resin has also been used for thousands of years by the indigenous people of Australia because of its antibacterial properties. It can be used as an antiseptic on wounds. This is the Ngagi tree, right in the middle of Melbourne. You wouldn't know it, but it's estimated to be between 300 and 500 years old. What a change this old gum would have seen over its lifetime. There's something enigmatic about the eucalypt. Towering giants, stoic wardens of an ancient continent, woven deeply in the tapestry of life and death. It's no wonder the original inhabitants consider them to be sacred. Though millions of square kilometers are covered by this resilient genus, they are being threatened by land clearing and worsening bushfires. And you don't know what you've got, till it's gone. That's it for this video. But before I go, I just want to say, wow, my last video really blew up and I was not expecting that. Thank you to all the people who left supportive and kind comments. Well, most of you anyway. I want to keep making videos about Australia's fauna and flora. So stay tuned and I'll catch you next time.